So today I sat down and I thought about what is the most important lesson, the most key lesson that you learn about in EMT school that I can deliver to you right here on YouTube that will help you connect all the dots inside of emergency medicine, inside of EMS. I'm gonna deliver it to you right now. It has to do with two main systems. The air that we breathe in and out of our lungs, we're gonna talk about that right now. And we're gonna hyper-focus on the alveoli and the function of it. And then later on, we're gonna move into the heart about how blood travels through the heart itself. You're gonna wanna watch the entire video. Watch it over two, three, four times because the information in this video unlocks the rest of what you learn how drugs are gonna work in the body, and a lot of the different emergencies that we see in EMS. Let's start with learning about the alveoli itself. So I'm gonna read this out to you here. Now the alveoli, I have it written down here, is the functional unit of the respiratory system. It is a site of gas exchange between oxygen and carbon dioxide. Now, you're gonna see a word in here. It's called diffusion. This is movement from higher to lower concentrations. That's your textbook definition. Let's make it more simple, shall we? When you see diffuses or diffusion, it's simply the movement of the gases. It's simply the movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide moving from one place, we're gonna learn about in a second, to another or vice versa. So when we see anywhere diffusion, diffuses, just think there's movement of gases. That's it. So now I make it much more simple, okay? Gas exchange, we're just swapping locations. We're swapping locations, okay? Now, the alveoli is thin-walled balloon-like sacs. So when we talk about, an example, a COPD patient, right? Their alveoli, especially if they're an emphysemic patient, have emphysema. The alveoli is literally disfigured, right? It's not functioning up to its 100% capacity. So they have a problem with oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange. Quite simply, the, what I have here, functional unit of the respiratory system, if the alveoli is damaged or filled with fluid, like in heart failure, the entire system is going to fail because the whole reason we have a respiratory system, the whole reason we have lungs is to get oxygen into the body and carbon dioxide out. And if the alveoli, which is our functional unit, is not working properly, our whole system will fail and will enter shock. This we have to know cold. Now, the alveoli, key point, is surrounded by the pulmonary capillaries. Okay, whoa, hang on. Now, the capillaries, has to do with the circulatory system. That's blood movement. So alveoli, capillaries, how do, these, how do these systems become intertwined? We need to get oxygen into the bloodstream. We have a heart in our body that pumps. Why does it do that? So we can move blood around our body and get rich oxygenated blood to all the little cells, you know, all the way out here on my fingertips and all the way down here on my shoes, right? At my feet, right? That's what we have a circulatory system for, okay? But we need oxygen. Where does the oxygen come from? The outside air. When we breathe in, oxygen enters our body. It's going to shoot down our entire respiratory system until it gets down to the alveoli. When an oxygen gets down to the alveoli, well, it didn't just sit there. Well, then we have our diffusion, our movement. The oxygen is going to pop off the alveoli and enter right here, okay? Those pulmonary capillaries, right? What's going to enter into, what we're going to talk about later, which is our heart blood flow. That heart blood flow is going to pick up that oxygen via, uh, eventually, those pulmonary veins that lead back to the heart and now all of a sudden, on the left side of the heart, we got rich, red, if you will, <laughs> oxygenated blood to be pumped to the rest of our body through the arterial system. Lots to unpack here, okay? But once you have this down, again, this is, this is probably the most important video I've ever posted on, on YouTube or anywhere. 
Watch this two, three, four times, because if you don't get this down cold, you will not pass an RMT. You will not pass school. This is must know. This is the foundation of everything we learn. Okay, let's continue. Here we go. Now we got the crazy words, but it's not crazy because we already tackled it. Oxygen diffuses, it moves from the alveoli to the pulmonary capillary. So oxygen's going from the alveoli, okay, to the pulmonary capillaries. I got pictures coming up. Hang with me, okay? To oxygenate the blood, which then returns back to the heart to be distributed to the rest of the body. We already learned that. Check it off. Carbon dioxide diffuses, it moves from, pulmon from the pulmonary capillary to the alveoli. So, okay, oxygen comes into the body. We need that for our blood. Carbon dioxide's a waste product. Get it out of my body. So I want to take it from my pulmonary capillaries to the alveoli. And then when I exhale, it gets out of my body, which then is exhaled by the lungs that are removed from the body. You just learned the movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide but I got pictures, hang with me. So quite simply here, we're gonna go through the inhalation step. So here we have gas exchange of the lungs. I'm gonna show you the inhalation phase when we breathe in. What are we breathing in? We're breathing in oxygen, okay? Let's go through this. So what we have here is we have deoxygenated blood to the lungs. So we're gonna learn about heart blood flow here in a moment to wrap this presentation up, so hang with me. But now, on the right side of the heart, is deoxygenated blood, blood that's returning to the heart from the venous system. The oxygen's already been dropped off of the cells. Blood's returning to the heart, going through the right atrium, going through the right ventricle, going through the pulmonary artery, and now we're gonna end up here in the lungs because we need oxygen to do our next pump, okay? So deoxygenated blood, okay, again to the lungs, coming from the heart, from the pulmonary artery, okay? We inhale oxygen into the lungs. We bring that in, okay? Now, this looks like a little cloud. That's our alveoli, okay? So, I'm gonna read what it says here in the corner. Gas exchange of oxygen, O2, and CO2 from a higher to a lower concentrations, okay? So think about this, folks. What we have is this is deoxygenated blood. Doesn't have oxygen, right? So what this means, the oxygen wants to, by diffusion, by this movement of gas from a higher to a lower concentration, okay? That's our definition, okay? The oxygen goes, I'm gonna make a move from the alveoli, and we're gonna drop that in over into the pulmonary capillaries, okay? Now, the CO2, which is very high at this stage, it wants to get out of the body, it says, I'm getting out of here. I'm gonna to move to the alveoli, okay? So this is our movement, which is going to look like over here. And we can see it happening right here. This is what ends up happening. We're now on exhalation phase. As we exhale, the CO2 leaves the body via exhalation. The O2 is moved over. Now we have that bright red blood, right? Here's our oxygen. Now with the oxygen now, what's going to happen? If we look at the lungs, exhale carbon dioxide leaves the body. This blood so it goes to the heart via the pulmonary veins and oxygenated blood goes to the heart and the heart's the pump of the body, which is going to connect up with our friends, the aorta, the arterial system. And now oxygenated blood goes to the body's tissues and all the little cells throughout your entire body from your hips to your fingertips. All right, there it is. So that we have to know. Now, it's your first time learning this. Again, watch the video over again. Watch the video over again. This, watch this two, three, four, five times. If you don't know this, you will not pass school, you will not pass an REMT. You need to master this, and you even need to teach your other fellow students if, if they're struggling, because this is the core of everything we do in EMS, understanding the alveoli and heart blood flow. It's a must. Now let's continue, and let's move on to learning the other section that we've touched on a little bit, heart blood flow, and how this all connects together. Come on, keep it up, let's go. Hey, if you're enjoying the video so far, smash that like button down below and let's continue. Now, here's our heart blood flow. I want you to think about this for a moment. Let's say I have a patient and let's say there's a heart attack in a certain region of the heart. We're now going to understand what might be going on with that patient. What if the patient has heart failure? 
if we have a certain valve or a certain area of the heart that we know is weaker, we may see a certain finding or sign symptom in that patient. But we will not know any of this if we do not even understand the heart blood flow. So this is why this is a must, okay? We put these two lessons together, they're the most important lessons that we can learn about. So let's start by understanding the venous system, okay? The venous system here is basically, you can see is labeled with that deoxygenated blood. It looks more blue for labeling purposes, okay? Now on the more red side, we can see the arterial system of like the aorta, and we see the red oxygenated blood on the left side, okay? Now, what we have here is we have the right side of the heart, okay? The right side of the heart is made up of our right atrium and our right ventricle, and we have some valves that we're going to talk about. Now, I first want to start with this. Plant in your head this. When we're talking about heart blood flow, arteries with an A, arteries, they are going to go away from the heart. So if I talk about an artery, notice it's going to go away from the heart, okay? Now, when I talk about veins or the venous system, you're going to notice every vein that I talk about or the venous system returns to the heart. So that V for venous or venous system, it's going to come back to the heart. Notice the superior vena ca uh, cava and the inferior vena cava, you may hear them as the SVC and the IVC. This is blood returning from the body that the oxygen's already been dropped off. It's deoxygenated blood our system wants more oxygen. So the venous system leads us back to the heart. The right atrium is gonna drop down to the stronger right ventricle. Now, I'll, this is what I like to say. I like to say that the ventricles are strong and they have a job to do. So you remember, like it's A first, then V. So atria are on top, the ventricles are on the bottom. The blood shoots down between the atria and the ventricle on each side, okay? So right atria drops down into our right ventricle, okay? When we're in the right ventricle, there's a valve in between, the tricuspid valve, okay? The tricuspid valve, okay? That is gonna be first, okay? Right here. Now, as we go up through here, we give the right ventricle a job to do. The right ventricle's job is to get us oxygen because we don't have any, okay? So the right ventricle is going to move blood through the pulmonic valve into the pulmonary artery. Notice it's going away from the heart. It goes to the lungs, and that is where we pick up on what we just learned earlier, that whole system. So now the pulmonary artery is going to go down into the lungs, got to gather that oxygen. Oxygen moves off that alveoli, okay? We now gather that oxygen. We're going to push that oxygen through back of the heart via the pulmonary vein from the lungs. See how it's all connecting now? Do I have a light bulb moment? I hope so, okay. Now we have that oxygen-rich blood. It comes back to, uh, from the lungs in the pulmonary vein, okay? Vein returns back to the heart. We talked about that. Left atria drops down to our strongest ventricle, the left ventricle, okay? A lot of muscle around this ventricle we can see, okay? Now, left ventricle is going to push through up to the aorta. We have some valves here, okay? In between the left atria and the left ventricle, we have the mitral valve, and going up to the aorta, we have the aortic valve, okay? The job of the left ventricle is pump blood to the rest of the body, get the blood in the arterial system so we can push blood out to the entire rest of the body, to the brain, to the feet, to the hands, to the hips, everything, okay? So now we're gonna push the blood up, through the aorta, it's gonna go up and it's gonna go down. We can see through here, through the descending aorta, and then it's gonna be pushed up and be pushed down, spreading out to the arterial system via the aorta. And looking at this, folks, I just wanna give you a few pearls from what I'm looking at so we can pick up on some pearls. Wanna go to bonus land? Let's go to bonus land and let's learn some new stuff. Okay, have you heard of an aortic dissection or an aortic rupture? Look at this aorta, folks. Okay. Imagine you have so much trauma and imagine how high the mechanism of injury would have to be, right? How severe the trauma would have to be to slice open your aorta. But look, imagine the power from the left ventricle pumping that blood to the rest of the body, how much blood is sitting right here. This is why if we have an aortic rupture near the area of the heart 
or by the way, anywhere, even if it's down here in the abdomen, the aorta itself, there's so much blood there. This is why it's a life threat. This is why I tell my students, someone has a, you know, a severed aorta, their odds are they may not even be awake by the time you get to the call because there's so much blood. Okay. So when we hear about these things, now we understand the anatomy of it. We now go, wow, that's really bad. Okay. So what, what else could we kind of take a look at here to, to, to say, okay, hmm. Well, what's, what else can we look at based upon what we know? Well, another pearl that I want to give you is the blood that is returning, okay? The blood that is returning to the heart, right? If in any part of this, let's say my right ventricle, let's say it fails at the pump. Won't that, wouldn't that affect the whole system? So the right side of my heart fails at the pump, right? What's going to happen? If it fails here, I may not be getting enough here. That's, that makes sense. But let's go a little deeper than that, okay? If I fail here, what happens to the blood? Well, a saying I like to use is, in your mind, mentally, when I first learned this to make it super simple, is blood backs up. It literally backs up. So this is why when we have heart failure patients, we see the following. If the right side of my heart fails and someone's in right side heart failure, okay? Blood backs up into the venous system. That's why they get edema in their legs. That's why they get JVD, jugular vein distension, vein distension, because blood backs up. That's how we learn it. That's how we understand it. Okay. Oh, wow. The right side of the heart's failing. So the blood is not as going strong in that system, blood starts to back up and pull. Oh, okay. Now that's why they get JVD. Ah, oh, that's why we get edema in the legs. Ah, oh, okay. So this venous system, because of the right uh, side of heart failure, isn't really doing what it's supposed to do. Yes, okay. What about the left side of the heart? What if that fails at the pump? Well, in left side heart failure, you know what's interesting? You know what we get? We get rails in the basis. We get fluid accumulation, right? Fluid accumulation in the base of the lung. That's rails, okay? We get rails in the lungs. That's a lung sound we hear at the base. Hmm. Okay. Well, why would might that happen? Blood backs up. Where is it back up to? The lungs. And folks, the fluid has to go somewhere. What happens is that fluid is going to leak over, and we just learned what's connected to that? Our alveoli. Now we have fluid leaking over into the alveoli. We know as our functional unit, what's going to happen? Our oxygen coming into the body, our carbon dioxide leaving the body is going to be impaired, and the patient feels like they're literally drowning. Okay? So now look at what we learned based on a little bit of anatomy. This is why we talk about, in my program, we have an entire anatomy and physiology course. So that way you understand the anatomy at the functional, at the simplest level, we understand it. So when we're learning about emergencies, we're learning about diseases, they actually make sense. I hope you love this video. Smash the like button down below, comment down below where you learned about this. Show me some love in the comments. And as always, I'm here to help. Let's go.